You know what's impressive about camera technology today is the amount of sharpness that we're able to pull from the camera bodies and lenses. But the downside of that is always skin. It always feels like it takes a big hit every time you capture a beautiful portrait. And you and I both know that, you know, retouching does take a really long time. And for photographers who are dealing with a lot of skin on a regular basis and have a lot of turnaround times, even saving five to 10 minutes on every image is a godsend. And that's why we wanted to create infinite skin. This image here provided by Luca Storelli is a photograph that is a good representation of what can be possible in just a few seconds. So let's say the image on the left here is our before and the image on our right is our quote unquote after. And that's just after using one rendition of infinite skin. The idea of the plugin itself is to be able to control the clarity, which is our detail of these individual pores here and in comparison to the transitions between highlights and shadows. So one actually takes control of pore detail and sharpness and clarity, which is why it's called clarity, and smoothing takes care of the smoothing that happens in between the highlights and shadows. And both of those independent controls do give you these end results. So think of photographers like boudoir photographers and wedding photographers that deal with a lot of skin. This is something that can create a really good foundation. Think of it like a primer before you're editing. It's not meant to replace high-end re editing or high-end retouching results that are done by hand, but it's a good accomplice or a side tool to help you get started with a good base. And as I mentioned before, I truly feel like this tool pays off for itself within the first day with the amount of time that you save. And that's just something that has been reflected through other photographers using our tools. And I encourage you to check out our website to see all the examples and testimonials that other photographers have done um, with using Infinite Skin. Now, with that being said, let's just jump into it and show you exactly how Infinite Skin works. Now that I have just this image up, what I'm going to actually do here is go ahead and start by hitting the Create button. But before I do, <laughs> before I do, let me just drag the sliders to the left and I'll explain that in a minute, okay? Actually, let me just leave it as default and then it'll make sense. And that setting is gonna be the light setting. I clicked on light and then it brings clarity over to the right and smoothing over to the left, which I'll explain in a minute. And also, last but not least, make sure that this icon is on. And that is just to ensure that it adds a black mask to the group that it creates so it can manually paint in the skin um, automatically or manually, I should say. And this button here is a highlight protection, which I, I'm gonna keep on as well to protect the highlights. Don't worry about this for now. And I'll also explain later what happens when this is turned off. So I'll hit create and Give it a few moments and it will create a folder for you with a black mask and a blend if mode, which you don't have to worry about so much, but it allows you to protect your highlights. So what I could do now is I'm going to click on this brush tool here. And for the time being, I'll use a flow of 100%, opacity 100%, and my brush hardness will be 0%. So I can quickly basically brush everything in <laughs> without spending a ton of time. And you will notice very subtle details change. Don't worry about that for now. I'm going to explain that in a minute. But this is where it all kinds, kind of begins. And I can also use my backslash button on my keyboard to generate this red mask here to ensure that where I'm brushing is accurate. And the beauty of this panel is it doesn't need to be 100% accurate. So kind of brush wherever you want. And also secondarily, you can use a different workflow instead once you get the hang of it, where instead of brushing back the entire face, you can just use it on selective areas. On our side, we have other tutorials as well to show you how to use the panel in different parts of the workflow, as well as the different settings you can also use and when to use them. So I'll uncheck my um, backslash button. And now that I have my mask set up, let's zoom in here for a little bit. So the way the panel works is on the right hand side, you have clarity bumped up to 100. What that means is, it's going to ensure that all the pore and texture details are retained. If I drag it to the left, for example, what you'll notice here is that all the pore and texture detail has been minimized. And so this is great because I really haven't done anything else to it. I've just minimized the amount of pore detail or texture detail. And you might be wondering, well, how is that exactly happening? How does it know exactly how much to reduce? And doesn't it matter what resolution you might have as um, with your photographs. And here's the coolest part about this plugin. So Infinite Skin will actually detect your face of the photograph and figure out the dimensions 
of the photograph. And then based on that, create a frequency separation with the perfect radius, and then allow the plugin itself to determine how much or how little um, texture detail you would like to keep. And the results are great because regardless of the photograph, it knows the radius to use, it knows the settings to use in order to get the most realistic results possible. And again, keep in mind, this is still keeping the integrity and the shape of this pore structure, or I should say the, the face structure, and yes, as well as the pore structure. So it's keeping a very realistic result here, which is nice because you can be very subtle with it if you want, and you don't really have to change much about the image. And I think that's really, really fabulous. So if I go and this turn this on and off, You'll see some smoothing happening. You'll also see some of the pore structure getting softened a little bit. And now smoothing itself, on the left-hand side, it basically means that there's going to be as less smoothing as possible. Again, to complement the clarity, on the left-hand side means that the clarity is the least amount possible on the pores. So you see very less sharpness and detail in the pores. And the same thing with smoothing. If I have it to the left, it doesn't really do much at all. It's, it's you know, doesn't have much smoothing going on to begin with. However, if you then want and in to increase this slider, what happens if I drag this from the left to the right, you'll notice that it smooths more and more. And you can determine how much you want, and that is up to you to decide. And also, if you decide that you don't want this across your entire image, but perhaps you only want to apply to a certain range of the face, you can of course use your mask to only mask in the areas that you want. And you can also run two instances of infinite skin. So in case you would like these settings for maybe just the, uh, the under eyes, you could do that and just mask in the eyes and then you're done and then run another one for another part of the face. So yeah, that's how these two relate to each other. First, I decide whether or not I how much texture and pore detail I want. If it's too sharp, I can reduce it. And then I can increase and decrease the smoothing as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at um, the folder itself. Again, as I mentioned, there's a mask here. And if I hit Option and click on the mask, you can see what I've painted. And if you're wanting to bring back any of the original detail, you would simply need to use the black brush and paint over where you want to hide things again. And that way what happens, and just for a quick reminder is it will bring back the original image without affecting that part or without infinite skin affecting that part. Next, let me just jump in here and we'll take a look at the layers themselves. The way that it's currently stacked is that we have the detail layers here. We have sharpen and details. They work both together in order to form the details of this photograph. Then we have two smoothness layers. And the reason for that is because this smoothing slider here will go all the way to the left and right, when it goes all the way to the middle, what it does is it takes the first layer and increases it to 100% opacity. And then if you go any further, it will then enlist the second layer as an additional effect. So you can see here, if it goes in the middle, this will turn 0%, and then this one will be at 100 or so and then this one starts counting down. So that's why there's two of these layers here, and then you have the details and sharpen. And this clarity actually is what determines the pore structure. So you can see here as I move the slider left and right, the contrast here goes up and down, and the contrast is controlling how much contrast is in the pore detail. And that's how these relate together. So if you ever want to modify the group itself, I recommend adding a mask rather than going into the individual layers, but at least you know how to do that. And also cool enough is if you decide that maybe you like the way the results are looking for infinite skin generally, but you maybe want to take it a little bit further, let's say smoothing wise, you can then go here, add another blank layer in between details and smoothing. And you can also go ahead and do some brushwork if you so choose to. I would highly recommend um, looking at some of the other videos on our site before doing something like this, because I go into detail about um, smoothing and sharpening and modifying these specific layers. Okay, so you don't have to know too much about that right now. The thing that I do want you to know is that this slider itself 
controls the layers within the group. But you don't have to open the group anymore. Also, once you're done with the group itself, and you don't have to know anything about the group in order to actually use the panel, you can decide that simply by using the sliders. And that's it. We've consolidated all these advanced settings and layer setups into this panel so you can easily use sliders in order to quickly and easily decide how much clarity and how much smoothing you want. One quick thing to note is that if for some reason your slider seems to kind of not update the results, you simply need to double click on the button itself just in case. Also, talking about the buttons down here. Now, as I mentioned highlight protection, what happens if I turn this off is you'll notice very generally and briefly, because I haven't done really a ton of work, but let's say that I increase the smoothing a lot for temporary purposes. If I turn this on and off, you'll see that the highlights are now being protected. And if I turn it off, they're not being protected anymore. And that's what a highlight protection does. It just ensures that the brightest highlights are also protected really nicely to make sure that the results stay good. But sometimes you might want to actually flatten those hotspots and highlights, in which case you just turn it off and it would be included as part of your results. This is going to be very subjective to each person on what settings are best, but I think this will give you a good example. And on our site, again, as I mentioned, we have a ton of other tutorials on how to use infinite skin and the best ways to go about it. Now, a couple of final things here is that if you are done with your results and you would like to say flatten this group because it's going to take up a lot of space, come over to the create button and right click. And then suddenly all the contents of that folder will be flattened into this one layer with the mask retained. So that way you still have control in case you at the last minute would like to reduce the opacity. Or maybe if you feel like it's easier to control one layer rather than a group, feel free to flatten it because now you have everything in one familiar layer. And the coolest part about this is once you're done with that, maybe you want to run a second pass. You just hit create again, and then it will generate a second copy for you to do whatever you want with. Perhaps you want to take the lips a little bit further. Now that you have the second copy there for you, you can easily do that because it has a black mask as I selected here. And just like that, I'm able to take it further and kind of do whatever it is that I, I am looking to do. Also, I'm not sure if I um, remember it earlier, but if you do not have the black mask selected and you hit the create button, what it will do is it's going to try and select every color on the image that looks like a skin tone. And for this particular example, it doesn't work. As you can see from the thumbnail, it's also selecting some of the hair and things that uh, you don't want selected. And it's also not selecting some of the shadows. So for this particular image, it doesn't work well, which always by default, I recommend people using the black mask option and the blend if option to begin with. So that's kind of how to use infinite skin, the purpose behind it, meaning that, um, you know, we don't use this to replace the retouching process, but it can give us a good head start into just evening out some of those overly harsh details that you might not want to spend all the time retouching for all intents and purposes. Now, if you do want to keep it, then that's totally okay. And you are able to do that. And just by keeping the clarity slider up, and adjusting the smoothing as best you see. But if you are um, lucky enough to spend a lot of time retouching as I do, and I do for a living, then I can do everything by hand. But this is a good supplementary tool to aid in the process to enhance that ability. Now, if you would like to join our group, we would highly encourage you to come to our Instagram and our Facebook, join our site, and also check out our other videos on our website to see more educational information and testimonials and before and afters and other photographers who are working in the industry and are using this in their day-to-day -day life. And as I said, even if you save just 10 minutes on every image, this will pay off in no time. And I think you can agree on that. Anyways, hope you all are having a great day. I hope you're excited about this as we are. And we're very excited to see how you use Infinite Skin for your work.